Hi, I'm Ed Frawley from Learburg. Uh, we're here today to talk to Mark Keating about, uh, and Mark is the instructor for our Relationship Games course, and we're here to talk a little bit about how the, uh, where the course is right now. We've gone through four different uh, courses, and the course has grown. It was the first course that we did, the first interactive course that we did here at Learburg actually the second course for Learburg. The first one was my basic dog obedience course, which is a self-study course. There's no instructor interaction. It has 150 videos in it, and it's a six-week course. Mark's course is a, a instructor interactive course where there are live chats once a week with the students, where the students uh, submit questions and answers through the, the web board. Each week has its own web board. Uh, and then each week students can submit their own video, short little video clips of very specific training uh, concepts that Mark is teaching right into the forum with two buttons uh, on a web browser. Our uh, IT staff has written a program that from, from any smartphone, two clicks uh, from the web browser takes a video from the smartphone and any smartphone and puts it directly right into the forum. I don't think there's another online or another online course teaching anything that I've heard, much less just dog training that does that. But we have a great IT staff here at Learburg, and that some of these uh, features for the course are helping to make future courses even better. And I think that's what you know. I'd like to talk with you about today is how is the course going? How are you using some of these features that my IT staff has put together mm -hmm. to make the course better? How's it all working? Well, it's like you said, we're in our fourth round now. Yeah. So uh, it's going extremely well. When we started, um, I knew, you know, just from talking to you, and then and I have done stuff uh, on Skype for a few years. Now, oh, yeah. So I have I had some familiarity Explain that, though, with so it. So they understand. Well, I had done. I was primarily doing. Uh, you know, I do bite work things, and I was mm -hmm. primarily doing decoy type training over uh, on Skype with people that were not able to travel to my place. Mm -hmm. So we would do, you know, an hour lesson or whatever. And um, I was, a I knew when you came to me with this concept and you talked to me about it, I knew that in theory, if all the ducks were in a row, it could work. Because when I was working on Skype, if the, if the connection was good and, and everything was working out well, I was able to see what they were doing and say, okay, make this little adjustment, and then the person would make the adjustment, so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, when, when you to told me about this concept, I knew in theory it would work, but having no experience with the program itself, I was, you know, I'm not gonna say I was hesitant, I was curious, like, oh, I wonder how this is gonna go. And the, 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 I don't know what the correct, the software or whatever it is, functions, as far as I'm concerned, flawlessly. I'm able to uh, see the videos that the students upload easily. It's extremely easy for the students. Now, some students in the beginning, we have the first week of our course is, uh, is basically a marker training overview because marker training is essential towards all these games. But it's also a week where people can, <clears throat> the students can load a test video and kind of get everything in, in, in line that way. So they make sure their videos are working. They know how to do it. Yeah, before we get into week one and they need to start uploading videos. Right. So, um, so far, everybody has, you know, with just a very couple few exceptions, if everybody has a decent signal, mm -hmm. they're able to upload the videos easily. The people who don't have a decent signal basically will, w up, will shoot their video mm -hmm. and then drive to, you know, Starbucks or something like that in town and then they'll upload the video there. So, um, it works great. The well, I got to say something. Sure, too. sure. Just so, uh, like you're talking about how the software works. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of research on this before, mm -hmm. and uh, Cindy's uh, brother-in-law is mm -hmm. a professor at a very major university, and he got his university and started in online training because mm -hmm. he, that was his forte. Mm -hmm. And he'd gone to West Point, been in the military, knew how important training was, and this is a university of 20 some thousand kids, so mm -hmm. it's a big deal. They use a product called Blackboard, and I looked into Blackboard mm -hmm. and thought about using it. And then I looked into some other programs, mm -hmm. and I wasn't impressed with any of them. For one thing, they were very expensive. Mm -hmm. 
Which was, would have been fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was worth it. <laughs> if it was worth it, but it wouldn't do what we wanted to do. None of them could do smartphone video uploads. Mm -hmm. None of them did the kind of live chat that we wanted to have. Mm -hmm. So I tossed the dice and we have an IT staff of five people mm -hmm. and they worked for 18 months mm -hmm. just doing the core for this program. And it just makes my day when I hear you say things like, it works flawlessly. Yeah, I'm on it, you know, an hour or two, two hours a day, basically. I mean, it depends on the week and stuff, or mm -hmm. the day of the week, I guess you could say. But yeah, I mean, it works great. The, the live chats are, I mean, the, the program for that is just great. It's now, a, a, I, I'd like to say, it's a well-oiled machine. The people, you know, the, within 10 minutes of our first live chat, everybody knows how, to, how the whole thing works. Uh, you know, the communication as far as like uh, being able to hear everybody is working out great. Uh, then we have the discussion forum. The discussion forum is basically there for any questions they might have in addition to additional questions from the live chat because in the live chat it's a lot easier for me to answer, answer people's questions and type them out so people will ask me a question that maybe they didn't ask me the week before or they'll ask me a question uh, that they wanted me to elaborate on my response from last week. So the live chats work out great. Um, we well, also chat, uh, oh, yeah. let me just make a point here. We made a decision to have a forum for each week of the course, yeah. rather than one big forum yeah. for the whole thing. How's that working out? That's working. I mean, for I think for everybody, in addition to me, it it helps keep everything. You know, I mean, right now I'm running um, I think 37 students. Mm -hmm. So, and and you know, there's there's eight, well, 15, 14, 15, 15 games. I think there's 15 games. So we had to do it this way. Mm -hmm. We had to, otherwise I'm, I would be jumping around all over the place and the students as well would be jumping around all over the place. So what we have is basically, it is an interactive course. So if you're going to take the course, you have to submit your videos by the end of the week. Now we do have a week at the end, the ninth week, which is allowed for makeup work. So whereas if you would compare that to like a self-study course, a self-study course is you have more time Right. You have a little bit more time and you don't have the pressure of having to commit to something every week like we do in our course. Our course is nine weeks. So, but that being said, each game that we tackle, I believe, with the information that we give people and it seems like the questions, at least in terms of marker training and the fundamentals of how we train, are few and far between. So that tells me that we are giving uh, the necessary information to people, right. okay? They have all the information they need to start market training. So uh, I feel like um, it's just running great. I mean, if for me... How are I, you using the, like we were talking earlier, when people submit videos here yeah. from previous courses, how are you using, do you use them all? Do you use some of them? Do you bring them into uh, videos from previous weeks? Do you bring them into current... Yeah, well, what we do, what we've done so far, and like I said, we're in our, our fourth round uh, of, the, of the course. Uh, Jeff and I have gotten together at the end of each course, and we have dinner, and we watch all the videos. And just us both being dog people and knowing the games and knowing the courses, it's, it's actually a good time for us. Yeah. It's fun, because sometimes it's funny, <laughs> sometimes it's a little hairy, you know, a little touch and go. You don't sometimes drink any wine when you're watching them, do you? A little bit. And then sometimes, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, we're, me and Jeff, we don't get to hang out too much because we're both working all the time. So yeah. when we get together, we work. So yep. the, when we get to hang out, it's, it's a joy. So we, uh, but we watch the videos and we go, okay, now how can people benefit from all of these people? So we call it peer instruction mm -hmm. because you can watch me do this stuff all day long. I've got lots right. of experience. And you know, in, in the in the relationship games and a lot of our video submissions, there's a few, there's a few videos where I'm working with like uh, CJ mm -hmm. or I'm working with Rainy or uh, you know one of your employees' dogs or something, which I, I'm not familiar with that dog. But nine times out of ten, you're seeing me handle a dog that I've handled before. Right. So to see someone else, for example, talking about peer instruction, we had uh, one of our students, and I think it's safe to use her name. She was a wonderful student and took a lot of pride from Australia. Her mm -hmm. name was Helen and she had a, a wonderful little uh, miniature poodle. And, uh, oh, I'm afraid to say I can't remember his name right now, but this little guy had ACL surgery. Okay, so he was, some of the games, he was not able to participate. So she recruited a friend's duck. 
to use the friend's dog. Idea. Very cool. So a friend's dog has nothing to do with marker training. Right. No idea. Using him to, uh, we have a sit pretty game. Sure. Okay. So we do a sit pretty game. Uh, she used the dog for that. Worked out wonderful. Well, her dog, at the same time, Archie was his okay. name. I mean, just a wonderful dog. And a wonderful rapport between the two from the get-go. And to see them advance throughout the course is just like, it's so rewarding, cool. fulfilling. So anyway, Archie had a problem with the nail clipper. Okay, And part of one of our games, we have, like I said, 15 games. Uh, we have a game called Accept Restraint, which is basically teaching the dog in a conflict-free way to accept being handled in some ways that are uncomfortable mentally or physically. You need that. Okay. Go to the vet. You, you need it. And in me working in a boarding kennel, uh, how many dogs I have to grab by the collar just to kind of grab them from here and there, and 50% of the time the dog wants to bite me when I do that mm -hmm. because they don't know me and it's, you know. So point is, this little Archie dog, it was a video that we decided to use because it, everything went beautifully in the, way, in the way that we're applying good marker training, uh, methodology we're building and building and building in a very systematic way and then she encountered a problem okay she overdid it not knowing of course mm -hmm. so and you could watch her back off go back move back maybe five six steps go back to the same pro protocol uh, using verbal marks you know good 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 okay okay whatever and then got to that same problem overcame that problem one step beyond that problem and stopped the session and we're like boy this is great because this allows people to see a real session not a scripted session right. and a lot of times we don't really you know we don't script anything here we just basically try and demonstrate what we're trying to teach and uh, when you have an issue a situation like this particular video it's priceless because you can see it in actuality like this well, is a real deal thing from the beginning of when i started producing dog training videos i mean there Really, there was no one doing any when I started back in 82, but over the years, I would see people try and produce a video and they would do, they would take a trained dog mm -hmm. and a trainer yeah. and have the dog go out and do whatever it was supposed to do. Well, I don't, I never ever have felt that's the way to teach people. People need to learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And by, by doing the peer learning, where you're bringing in problems to show people, here's the problem, and the odds are you're gonna run into this problem, yeah. and here's what you need to think about mm -hmm. with your dog. Mm -hmm. And I think what's gonna be cool as your course gets more and more and more of these peer videos in it is you're gonna see a dog that uh, has the same problem as this dog, this dog, mm -hmm. and this dog, and all three of them require a different approach mm -hmm. to solve that problem mm -hmm. and it's all the same problem but mm -hmm. their temperaments are all different exactly and that's what you're going to build strength in your in, in your course that's the beauty of the the interactive courses too is um or at least this interactive course i i'm i'm that was the big thing too is i was wondering well am i really going to be able to gather all the necessary information by watching a video mm -hmm. And, there, and the answer is absolutely 100% yes. If the audio is there mm -hmm. and the video is there and you're not too far away or whatever, and, and so far it's been just great, I can get, I can see and grab everything. And then, and then also it's like teaching a class where you see, I, I become familiar with these people and their dogs, with these students. So, and how many students do you have in a course? Uh, we take up to 20 in each course. So you have 20 students and then you have students that are going out taking video mm -hmm. and you limit we intentionally have limited yeah. how long the videos can be. Yeah. For, for several, I think for a few different reasons. A, a, well, first and foremost, the reason we want to keep the videos under two minutes is because with these games and with a lot of these dogs, and you know, we have people across the gamut. We have people who are going to compete. We have people who have already competed. Mm -hmm. We have people who don't do anything with their dog, who have never done anything with their dog. So because of that, these games are designed for everyone, for the serious competitor who wants something fun and light, but is at the same time going to help them develop their relationship, their interaction with their dog. And over here, for pet dog people, to have something cool, fun to do, and it's going to, we hope, it's going to kind of spark the flame, mm -hmm. which is dog interaction, and, what, how it, and then if it's done in this way, it'll spark the flame in the dog as well, because the dog is going to enjoy all this interaction. So, but the thing is, everybody, like you said, is different. Physically, mentally, every dog is different, and we teach the same way for everybody, but then what ends up happening is 
uh, Jessica has a Rottweiler, and Sharon has a German Shepherd. And, uh, and uh, uh, do you remember this guy from, um, with the Jack Russell Terrier? Remember that guy? Yeah, from Malaysia or China yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, super, super fun nice guy, guy, super cool guy. Yeah. Maybe, uh, I can't remember his name. <laughs> anyway, so you have all these different people with all these different dogs, and what happens in the video is instead of me going, know everybody, do it like this. When the dog does this, do that. I can look and see, oh my gosh, Abby's doing this right now. Oh, or, or oh, uh, he's, he's rewarding the dog in this way, and we're doing this particular game, and uh, while it's a valid reward right now, this is really going to, this could stifle him in three weeks. So I can go on there and say, hey, this looks fantastic. Everything looks wonderful. Now make sure you get away from this move because if you continue to do this in three weeks, your dog won't be able to advance this particular behavior. So it really allows me to deal with everybody individually. How they're, uh, and uh, to talk a little more, I am developing my teaching style based on what is happening here. And it's... Uh, it's m kind of changing, morphing into something else. By I'm trying to come up with a general way to explain to people general things that they can all understand in a very, very easy way. Like I said, everybody, it's not too complicated. But what I used to say before is completely different now. So now we're concentrating in the course. So our games, we have Restrained Recall is one of our games, super important probably our most important game. It's actually week three in the only game that week because it's so important to us, Restrained Recall. We have uh, a game about eye contact, we have a game about hand touch, we have a game about hide and seek, a game about going to a, like a place command, going to the, the dog bed. We have a game where the dog gets in between your legs. We have a structured fetch. We have the out, which would be used for outing a dog from a toy or if you would like to transfer the dog from an object they shouldn't have to an object that they can have. We have all these different things. And what we're, what's, I think is great is we're really now with these students who are, again, pet dog people, we're diving into science. And we're Ooh. saying, okay, what do dogs understand? They don't understand our language. They don't, they don't understand what we're saying. But they can associate certain sounds with certain outcomes. So the sound yes has an outcome. So if I say yes, yes, yes. Yes, those are four different sounds, okay? Mm -hmm. So we look at it like a dog, and we try, I'm trying to, my goal with the course, with all of these people, is to actually honor their goal, okay? Whatever your goal is, I'm here to help you with that goal. But what I would like to do for these people is take wherever they're at as a handler and make them a better handler. So if they're not talking enough, or they're playing too much, or they're doing this too much, I tell them that if they're talking too much, or their marks are inconsistent, or they're giving too much information, too much visual information, all of these things. Uh, it's really, really cool. And I'm able to do it with people in England, and Australia, everywhere. that's what you're doing with the, everywhere. With the videos. With the same thing. But with that said, mm -hmm. you know, I have to interject here mm -hmm. is that's the difference between the instructor course and the self-study and the self-study course. And it's why, for people that are watching this, Time is money. Yeah. We had to make those videos short because you're covering small little concepts, but as an instructor with 20 students, you can't watch a 15 yeah. minute video yeah. from 20 students every week. Mm -hmm. And you're watching these student videos in two minute, two minute clips you can handle. Yeah, absolutely. But it really still, it all comes back to time is money. Mm -hmm. And so when the question comes up from our standpoint, why are the uh, instructor courses more expensive? They're more expensive because Mark's time <laughs> well, is worth more money. Yeah. And if he's gonna have live chats every week, if he's gonna answer questions on the forum every week, uh, and if he's gonna look at the videos and then talk to the students about the videos, he has to get paid for that. Sure. That's why there's a difference between uh, your course and the courses we're doing with Forrest, Nikki on, on healing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are more money mm -hmm. versus my basic dog obedience course has 150 videos in it, mm -hmm. but I don't do live chats. I don't do video sure, submissions. Sure. And if I did do it, I'd charge three or four times more than what we already charge. Well, the thing, I'm but not, with that, I will say this, our goal, our goal in our self-study courses, the ones that you do, mm -hmm. or the ones I do, the ones the other instructors do, our goal is to put enough videos in them mm -hmm. so that the students 
learn what we're trying to teach them, they, and they don't have questions. Yeah, they have I don't the, get questions from my basic obedience course. Because all the, they have all the information. There's 150 videos in it in like the two week. That's a six week course. It's open to students for for 12 weeks, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking of throwing a couple of extra weeks in because mm -hmm. people go on vacation and stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, but the two week courses all have on the average of 50 videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you watch 50 videos on one core concept like engagement, mm -hmm. you're going to pretty much know what it's about. Well, that's the thing. The, 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 I guess the big advantage, the big difference, the reason I think, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I think the reason that we're offering both self-study and interactive <coughs> courses is to cater to people's needs. All right. Okay. Some people have more time. Yep. Some people have more, some people need the instruction right. to motivate want them. It. Some people want it. Some yeah. pe the thing, uh, to go back a minute, I got off track. The, the reason we keep them at two minutes, obviously, so I'm not watching videos right. all day long because I do have to get on there every day, watch the video thoroughly, get all the information, and then write a thorough response, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part. So sometimes it looks perfect and there's not much to say. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but also the games are designed to be short games. We don't want a dog doing looky here for seven minutes. Yeah. We want a dog doing looky here for no more than two minutes because there's a very, there's a very, there's a, there's this boat that's travel that, that leaves the shore basically. Mm -hmm. And that is the boat of interaction and awareness and attention oh. and all these different things. And once that boat sets sail to try and get that back is you're going to have some conflict right. and we would, uh, our relationship games, what we're trying to do, have fun, learn, dog learns, we learn, become better handlers, avoid any and all conflict whatsoever. That's impossible in life. Right. We understand that. And in normal dog training, I mean. It is, it is. And we, we've, we've talked a lot about that. And right. we'll, when, I'm sure we'll have more information for people as, as the university develops in those types of things. But we try to do the best we can with these people because when we talk about conflict and stuff, it's very, very particular towards that dog and that handler. So when we're talking about market training, that's, a, that's applicable across the board, right, regardless of, yeah, so, right. it's, so we're able to do that. So, but not only, uh, so two minutes, the dogs stay focused, I'm able to stay focused mm -hmm. because, you know, it's easy right. for me, but then also we don't want to be, at least as far as my thought, and maybe this is not the correct thought, but I would think, you know, we're going to have, we're constantly saving videos. With our Relationship Games course, every time we, we complete another course, Jeff and I are going to go back and we're going to add more peer videos. So people are going to be able to see more examples and more examples. And all of that stuff is going to take up, I think, probably, I don't know if like, you know, bandwidth or whatever that stuff is, is the terminology. I don't know how it works, but, you know, if we have... Works pretty good. I have 37 students, two minutes, if each, if each student loads, loads a two-minute video every week, mm -hmm. that's a lot of video. That's a so, lot of video. Yeah, so, and, and it's, and also... Honestly, from my experience, most of the videos are about a minute. Yeah. They're about a minute and 20 seconds. They're not much longer because people are able to get everything done uh, in well, that amount of time. We have it set up for those that have not taken the course before that they can watch them on an iPad, they can watch them on a tablet, they can, it doesn't make any difference whether it's mm -hmm. uh, an Android or... You can what, do, yeah, your phone. Anything. You can do it from your phone. And, and uh, the beauty of what my IT people did was... Uh, structure our players so that when a student starts to watch a video, mm -hmm. our computer talks to their computer and sees what kind of bandwidth they have, and then we can, we will stream the level uh, that they have for a download. So if they can handle, if their system can handle high definition download, we'll supply high definition download. Okay. And they talked back and forth about it. That's and if they can, if they have a really a poor uh, download for their computer system, they just, they'll be able to download it, uh, not on a dial-up, but not much bigger than a dial-up. It'll just be not as clear as high definition. Okay. So that's the way that, that whole thing works. Well, another interesting um, Oh, and one thing. last thing, you know, we have, and the reason you can have people in China and Australia and England and, and uh, Russia is because we have like 45 servers around the world, mm -hmm. so there, we're not streaming it just from one server here in the United States. We have servers in 45 different countries, yeah. and that's why people can, over there, can stream it right away. It was just, yeah, and we the, found that out by accident because Cindy's son is in the Air Force and he's stationed in Europe, and we went to visit him uh, a little, about a year ago, and I couldn't, I was getting 
uh, static when I was trying to download our streaming videos there and I came back and said, hey, you know, our goal here is to provide training all around the world yeah. and it's proving to be the case yeah. and we just can't have these videos stuttering when they watch them and then we look further and then we thought, oh yeah, we're just stuttering it. We're just streaming it from one, one place here in the country and that's how we put our stuff now on 45 servers around the world. And that's why they, well, it's so easy for you to... It's so efficient, you know, that's kind of, you know, I mentioned it a couple times before, but the, the, the beauty in these, in these uh, online courses, um, for, from, the, from the instructor's perspective and the student's perspective, from my own perspective, I get to do everything within the comfort of my own home. Yeah. So in the morning, I and finish, it has to work. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it, everything functions beautifully. I could be sitting in a, I could be sitting in a, in a capsule out on mm -hmm. the training field. Basically, that's how it works. So, I can do that in in the morning. I can drink my coffee and sit there and watch videos and, and whatever. The people, though, and I didn't realize this until after we finished the first course, and um, somebody we just kind of asked, you know, what do you guys think during the live chat? How'd it go for you? And I just, you know, I'm always. I guess I'm probably self-absorbed, so I'm always thinking about my perspective, but the students' perspective, they were saying, this is great, because not only do I not have seven other dogs around me barking, yeah. right, where, I, where I'm struggling to get attention from my dog because of all the distractions, but I can do this when I want. And Wednesday, I have this. And Thursday, I have chess. And Friday, I have choir or whatever. So I know that I have Monday, Tuesday night. Next week, I can do it this way. Instead of going, okay, I have to go to a class every week at 7 o'clock. Or, and, and in that class, I'll be lucky if I learn something because maybe, this, maybe the instructor will say hello to me, but probably not because they're going to be busy dealing, especially when you have a good dog, because mm -hmm. when you have a good dog in a good relationship, then, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease in a class. Do you know what I mean? So for, for me, and then last week, I had to leave town, go out of town, stay somewhere else, mm -hmm. and, you know, the... Did you live chat from there? I didn't do the live chat, but I had to... Uh, you know, they put us up in a band house, which is a whole other interview and, and a funny one at that. But anyway, uh, I, th I got there and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have Wi-Fi. You know, because I thought I have Wi-Fi, I had some work to do. So I had to hoof it down to the coffee shop, maybe about a mile away. But I was able to get in the coffee shop, sit down there, put my little earpiece in, watch videos. Yeah. And it was, for me, I, I got done and I thought, I'm on the road traveling. It's 10.30 a.m. and I finished my day's work here for the morning. You know, and it was just, it, it was just fantastic. I'm curious when we do the live chats, it was our decision to record the live chats and then put them. Yeah, huge. We post the live chats every week un, un, uninterrupted onto the forum. So if somebody's busy, they can go back and watch. They it. can listen to the live chat from the night before, yeah. the week before, two weeks before. It's Are huge. they using that? Huge. And I, I had no idea how much that element, like the live chats when we started it, I, I think, you know, I, me and Jeff talked about it and stuff and we thought, well, that would be a nice, you know, courtesy. Maybe well, what I thought about was, you know, we have 20 students and there was times when I've list, I've been in, I don't know, I haven't counted, but I've listened to quite a quite few. Quite a few of them, yeah. And, you know, I'll see there'll be 12, mm -hmm. 13 people on a live chat. Out of a, I know there's 20 in the course, mm -hmm. so there's seven or eight that couldn't do it. And I thought, man, they should hear this. Yeah. This is good stuff. That's why we started recording them and well, putting them in the forums. It wasn't until I forgot to record one. Oh, you got to that? <laughs> yeah, that I realized how important it is that I record them and that how, how much that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm... Everybody's that's what, human. That's another thing, too, is... is um, I, I feel like at least my performance as an instructor in this way gets more efficient with every passing week yeah. because I'm getting more, you know, there's, there was a little bit of stuff I had to work out and scheduling and knowing when to put this stuff up and this stuff and mm -hmm. making sure that I, that I'm constantly watching uploads and stuff like that. Um, so, but I had no idea until someone said, there's no live chat from last week. Where is it? <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, because there's a lot of things in, in, in the live chat, I go into pretty great detail yeah, about certain things and um, that and I just talk about videos and, and that's the, that's another thing is it's so easy for, because what ends up happening is people have the whole week to load their their work mm -hmm. so right now this week we have uh, gosh I don't even remember right last week we had structured fetch and um, maybe find your spot something like that whatever it was so the people have all week to load the video but a lot of people work nine to fivers you know Monday through Friday so they don't get to load the video until Saturday or Sunday so I look at, as soon as I can find the video, I, I go back and I reply at the hopes that they'll see it. And then, and, and just real quick, the way 
our idea behind relationship games, eight week course, I call it like building a repertoire. So it's like, I'm a, we're gonna learn 15 pieces of music. We're gonna start with this piece. Now we know this piece, we're gonna learn this piece and we're gonna take those two pieces and we're gonna put them on the back burner and we're gonna learn this new piece. So that what ends up happening is you develop and you, you, know, you can go back and pepper this stuff that you've been working on before. So it's better if the students get it in earlier because if they get it in on Wednesday, I can reply Wednesday afternoon and they have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to, to advance that behavior. And then but a talk lot, about it in the and, and then, we, then what, what we do is that because a lot of these students load them on Saturday and Sunday, I reply to them and then they'll talk to me about it during the live chat instead uh, of writing back in the, discuss, in the, in the video thread and yeah. then going back and forth because we do move on from week to week. Each week has its own videos, it has its own live chat, it has its own peer instruction, it has its own discussion forum for each week. That way it helps us stay on topic because otherwise we'd be kind of jumping all over the place. Well, the whole conversation here just uh, confirms Reinforces. my long-term goal here is we'll always probably do and produce DVDs for a long, long time, but I think there's going to reach a time when all of our dog training is going to be done online mm -hmm. and it's going to be streamed mm -hmm. and anybody that thinks differently has had their head stuck in a hole. Yeah. They really have, you know, and we're going to continue to offer DVDs for as many years as we have to. Mm -hmm. It's not going to disappear as quickly as uh, back in the day when VHS went away to DVDs. I mean, I thought that would take five years and it took 18 months. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. went from selling VHS tapes uh, to selling DVDs really in about a year. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. That won't happen here, mm -hmm. but it's only a matter of time. And I, I think people just need to learn uh, how much they can learn from mm -hmm. online training. Mm -hmm. There's so much to learn. And what I'm getting, quite frankly, from the students that I have talked to on my course, uh, is that it's so easy to go back and review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To go back and review off of a DVD that's two hours, three hours, four hours. I mean, I think I have one of them that I did with Michael Ellis that's five hours and we said, we're never gonna do that again. Yeah. You yeah. know, but to go back and try and find something quickly to review in a two or three hour DVD, I don't care how many chapters you have in it, it so still takes a lot of time. Yeah. But in our case, we have our, our system set up in weeks and mm -hmm. then segments of a week. And then each segment can have as many videos in it as you want. So if there's 15 videos in a segment, they're all titled. And if you want to go back and look up how to deliver food without mm -hmm. getting bit, mm -hmm. you know it's in this week, you know it's in this segment, mm -hmm. you scroll down, oh yeah, that's how you do it. Is that in your, sorry to, is that in your obedience course? Yep. Okay, we need to talk about that later too. There's, and that's the, the great thing too is we, with every week we encounter different issues that people are having. So, and with all of the stuff you've had over the years, a lot of that stuff, we can refer people back to that. But at the same time, when we uncover, when we keep encountering these issues again, we're gonna think, well, this would be a good place for a course. Yeah. Because what ends up happening is to take instruction, you know, we can, what this, the way I look at it is like these, this, the layout of the university is like an interactive video textbook. Basically, yeah. because if you think about it, I don't care what anybody says, it's still easier for me to read through a magazine than it is to read through a website and jump back and forth between pages right. and going back and forth. Now right. I can know I can fold this page and I can mark this page and I know right where it is. And it's the same thing with our course because of the layout, week to week to week. Mm -hmm. So I think that people that are interested, if, if anybody's interested in anything, uh, across the board, but especially with dog training, you know, we've got, I, I've got a lot of experience with competition work as well as tons and tons of behavioral issues and pet dogs and stuff like that. Obedience, jumping, all that stuff. You've got Mike Ellis, mm -hmm. who's got crazy amounts of experience, has his, he has a wonderful system for teaching, like top notch. You've got Forrest, right? Mm -hmm. Forrest is a, not only is he just this, charismatic, fun, like great, great guy. Also great feel, great application, very gifted. Mm -hmm. You've got you, who's like, you know, could be our, you know, pop, <laughs> you know, for all of us. Everybody but you've said, got, you've got twice as much. Everybody says that getting old is the golden years there. But so you, might, you might have as much, you might have as much experience as uh, all of us combined. 
together, maybe. I just didn't learn as much as all you guys. Learned. Well, the inform but you, the thing is, we we benefited from your mistakes. There you go. From your from your uh, toils. And we basically. have Gary Gary Caceres coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. And you've also got filmed. you've also got Kevin, who's oh, got yeah. tons Kevin, and my tons. My friend Kevin Sheldahl. We've got I mean on the, police on police courses that we, are coming. We've I mean we could talk about we've got because uh, we have. Uh, I I'm think, jealous because I wish it was 20 years ago. If we would have had this, I am so envious of the young people yeah. that are coming to be able to sit down and learn online like this. Mm -hmm. If we would have had this, I went to my first Schutzen seminar in 1974 and got a bug like mm -hmm. young people do today. Mm -hmm. And all we could do was go around and take notes. That mm -hmm. was even before videos. Yeah. Take audio notes. Yeah. And you know, and that's how that's how it happened. I bought a video camera in '78 for myself, not for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And there was no people just doing to satisfy video. your curiosity. Though. I videotaped seminar because my my memory is so shitty. I can't remember everything. <laughs> now I can blame it on old age. Back then, I didn't have an excuse, you know. Sure. So sure. I videotaped it, and then people gradually started to ask to buy copies of it. And that was back in the day when uh, a blank video VHS videotape cost twelve dollars. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd try and put six hours, man, I didn't want to use them very often. I tried to put six hours on one video table. Well, sure. that didn't work very sure. well. Sure. But, you know, those, day, those days are gone. No, and, it's... and I'm envious of the people, young people, that can come in here and learn this stuff. Now they're going to be so much better dog trainers. Well, they are. And, you know, the, the, the cool thing is before, you know, for us, for us as dog trainers to convey all this information that we've gathered throughout the years, Speaking of all of us that work here at the university, we'd basically have to write a book, you know, which is yeah. a crazy process. And, and how and, do you describe? How can you talk about timing in a book? No, I mean that's the thing. You can't can, do it. This, this makes it so much more accessible for us, so much easier. And the thing is, well, well, at least what I'm doing from my perspective is this is what I this is what I think is important. This these are the things that I fi find that's important with all of the people that. I've worked with over the years. So what we're trying to do, we're offering a service, obviously, to people to, to have a good product that they, can, that they can learn from, enjoy, they can get value out of that product. At the same time, not only be a, a product with good substance, but be an accessible product, something yeah. that, they can, that they can easily grab onto, which is this whole thing with the smartphone stuff is just ridiculous. It really is. But um, what we do, at least what I've done, and I believe that everybody else is doing, is we've designed courses that make it at least the way that I'm communicating everything, that makes it the easiest for everyone to learn. The everyone. whole idea is for people to learn. The idea is not to go, at least as far as I'm concerned, and I think all of us here are the same, not to go, oh, here's, I'm Mark Keating, and, and you know, I'm really smart. Listen to what I got to say because I'm cool that way. It's not that way. It's, this is what I think, not even what I like sometimes, but it's because what I like sometimes isn't the best thing. It's, this is what I think is really going to work going to be conveyed across the board to all these students. So you have all these people with all this information that you go, okay, Forrest, all of the information you've gathered from going to school and, and studying and working dogs and stuff, you put it all together, give me your ideas. And that's a very, you same thing, very well, valuable, like a wealth of information. Well, like I think that. the key for us is to get people that are not afraid to share yeah. what they know. You know, and Back in the, in the old days, there was always the mystique of the so-called professional dog trainer that didn't want to share all these yeah. secrets. This is no true. I'm not going to net mention names here, yeah. but this just happened. One of our instructors, unnamed, wanted to go to a seminar held by another pretty well-known instructor. I won't name mm -hmm. the person. And our instructor was told that they could not go to the seminar because this person did not feel that their information should be shared with somebody who's making his living training other people's training dogs. dogs. Sure. I mean, yeah. how close-minded can yeah. someone get? That is so alien well, that's to a, my thinking for my entire life from 1982 to now. A person it blew my mind. It's a person who's threatened. Insecure. They're threatened. Yeah. You know? yeah. But th the beauty is the people we have will tell our students everything they know if they ask. Yeah. And that's the kind of people we're going to have for instructors. Yeah, I mean, So in the future, when you come out with a new course, we're going to sit down like this and talk about the course mm -hmm. so that 
uh, and we'll keep that updated too. Mm -hmm. We'll keep that little conversation updated. I think it's a good deal we had this conversation after we've gone through four courses now because you can look backwards and, and talk about how it's going, yeah. maybe some of the changes that are made. Yeah. And I mean, if we would have had this conversation after the first month, honestly, things would still be speculation. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, fourth course, over 100 students, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, I will say this, people get out of it what they put into it. You've said that before many yep. times, but you can take the course and read the information and, may, and not do anything, not try it, or maybe try it, maybe not show me and I, and I never get a chance to see. That's great if you get something from it, but what we really want to see is, is videos. We want to see people doing the work we, because that's what's going to advance. If you sit within a, a comfort zone your whole life, do you know, it's, you're never really challenging yourself. But even me, being a, if I go train with Mike, Mike Ellis, and I go, because, you know, Mike taught me a lot, a lot of stuff All of some us. years ago. But if I would go train with Mike tomorrow and grab my dog, I would be nervous. I don't care what anybody says because I'm being evaluated. I'm being judged in a way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to want to perform my best. And because I'm going to want to perform my best, I'm not going to be present. I'm not going to be interacting with the dog because my mind is somewhere else. Not wanting so, to make mistakes. Yeah, you yeah. know. So if um, by doing this, I think we become, not only are we developing and then you're showing me your work so I'm able to advance that work, but you're putting yourself outside of your little comfort zone. Yeah. And you're developing yourself and your dog as uh, yourself as an as a individual and your dog as an individual. I see the same thing in seminars, you know, so, some people get so nervous in a mm -hmm. seminar that they pay extra money to come there and have a working spot, but they're so nervous mm -hmm. that I question whether it was worthwhile for them because mm -hmm. I don't think they remember everything they're being told. They just don't want to get out there and look like a fool exactly. in front of everybody else. And it's not, even the, it's not even the instructor, it's everybody else, your peers. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and it's the people that are out there with their dog. And I don't think they get out of it. Now, I'm not saying in, uh, seminars are a bad thing. We no, just no, had we just had a seminar here with Mia Skogster. She won the the world championships the week before. Mm -hmm. That was her seminar sec second time too. The second time, yeah. and the seminar is good, mm -hmm. but people can't learn everything from just going to a seminar. They can't learn everything from private training. They can't learn everything from an online course, from a DVD or go into somebody's school. It has to be a, it has to be a group effort yeah. and then apply that information and add in experience and that's how you get to be what you are yeah. and what the other instructors are. We're giving them a path to that right here with the DVDs mm -hmm. and with recommending certain schools. Like mm -hmm. people can come to you mm -hmm. uh, if they want and you do private training with sure, them. They people can, can send yeah. their dog to you. People yeah. can come in and spend time with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but and if they, but the beauty in this is, and I've told people this too, people, because, you know, because of what, you know, especially 15 years ago, what we did was so specialized, people would call me from Chicago, or call me from St. Louis, and they would drive up to, 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 and not even just the biting stuff, but to learn how we do obedience and things. And right. now I say, hey, there, here's this course you can take. It's a well-oiled machine. Yeah. We're not sitting here uh, working to the, uh, Basically, we're not at the mercy of Skype. Right. Do you know what I mean? And the thing is, because uh, the, the program works so, so fluidly, the videos work fluidly, I'm able to watch the videos right away. Everything just, I think it, you're right. I mean, it's completely the way of the future. And some things, I'm not going to get into my personal beliefs or ideas too much. Some things I think when you get into the future are scary. Okay, like I'm one of those guys who'd rather have a wheelbarrow than a four wheeler, yeah. right? But at the same time, this is completely legit. It's completely legit, and it makes it so that if someone lives in Duluth, right, which is maybe you guys don't know where Duluth is, but it's, it's up north of Minnesota. There's, Three hours there's, from there's it. not going to be many dog trainers up there, especially doing some of the things that we're doing. Yeah. So it gives them an opportunity. If someone is in, I mean, anywhere. Yeah. They could be in Tanzania. It doesn't make a difference. They right. can take this course. They can do all this stuff. And I mean, I know because, you know, I end up on these chats. These, most of the people, I think, obviously can speak English. You know, so when we get people from other countries and stuff, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the guy from Russia and stuff, they, I think they're just, it takes them a minute. Yeah. But because 
the information continues to be there. Like you said, I can watch a DVD and at the risk of offending anybody, I've been watching music instructional videos since I was eight years old, okay? Mm. And I never once, and I mean, I would order, and, and believe me, they were not cheap back in 1988, you know, yeah, for, for like a, a, what, a 12 years old, I'd have to save $80 to buy a, an hour and a half video. And I'm like, you know, kid in a candy store, turn it on, 10 minutes later, I'm sleeping. Right? That's just how it was. And then I forget where I fall asleep. You got to go back and watch it again. Blah, 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 blah. This stuff, it's always there. It's always accessible. You minimize your page. You go back up. You're right where you left off. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So I just think that uh, overall, like you said before, it's not just about learning, the, reading the information. Reading the information, you know, I can read how to fish all day long, but it doesn't mean that I can fish. It, I have to apply it. And when you can apply it, and then be evaluated by someone who knows. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's, it's huge. Oh. It, it saves you, like we said earlier, it saves you what somebody could be doing this stuff. And, and that's the thing, self-study versus, uh, it's up to you. It's, it depends on your skill set. It depends on whether you feel like you need interaction or not. Maybe a, a nice thing to do would be for someone to try uh, maybe a self-study course like Forrest's engagement course or I've got one that we're working on now about uh, play, play techniques. Good. Try something like that and after that go, maybe they feel like they're ready to try an interactive course yep. where there's a I little agree. bit more, um, you know, we don't want to say pressure because we're having fun. Everything is fun, in, at least in relationship games. Nobody's out there trying to win the world through relationship games. <laughs> Nobody's out there trying to uh, solve a, a dog that's trying to lunge at their face or anything like that. It's all fun, fun, fun. So, but, it, there, but you have to get your videos in every week. So there's a little bit more pressure than there would be in a self-study course. So, well, um, when you get done with, your, uh, with the games course, we'll have another one of these talks then. Yeah, and we see, and, uh, and just uh, go into more detail about what's in the course. I think that's what, that's something that we're going to do from now on. Every time we come out with new courses, it may not be this long, but I think sitting down for five or ten minutes, so people can grasp mm -hmm. where we're going with it, what we want to teach them, what they're going to get out of it, what they should expect to get out of it. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it easier than just uh, reading a little description of a few sure, paragraphs. Sure, or, or having us, you know, I mean, you know, we, we try to do things as efficiently as possible so we can put the information out. And a lot of times when we do like a little uh, trailer for, for a, a new course or a yep. new video, we just kind of put it out there. But when we do this, we're able to kind of personally yeah, dive we'll talk about it more. before it comes out, and then we'll run a course or two, and then we'll talk about it again. Yeah. That's the way we'll do just it. Just to kind of see how it goes. Always a pleasure. We're out of here. All right. Good. That's good.